Uh, I'm Adira and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Applied Mathematics in the University of Waterloo. So my presentation is on examining the influence of rumor propagation on temperature change using coupled socioclimate models. Uh, so the key message of this work is that rumor propagation about climate change in social networks can actually influence the global temperature levels. So the first question that might pop into our head when we hear the statement is that how can rumor propagation, something that is happening in social network, social networking side, influence uh, global temperature levels? So this is where coupled socio-climate models comes into action. So yes, as my friends have already mentioned, what coupled social climate models are, it's basically a coupling between a social model and a climate models. So basically, uh, climate models or climate predictions are usually made using Earth system models. And these Earth system models, usually what they do is like uh, define different emission scenarios and uh, calculate the corresponding temperature levels. But these Earth system models actually lack the human touch in it. It's simply like Earth has human beings in it, but the Earth system models that we use to study natural system does not actually uh, include human beings in it. But we all know that human impact on climate change is not something that we could just neglect, mainly because human beings are one of the most important reason behind the recent climate changes that we are experiencing, mainly due to the vast emissions that we have been emitting since industrial revolution started. Um, so it's important for us to understand and analyze how human nature can influence temperature or climate change in general, and also how changes in climate can influence human decisions. But human behavior is something which is extremely complicated, and it's, it's not something that we can easily model using mathematics uh, because of the complexity, and we might have to use like a lot of hundreds or thousands of parameters to develop uh, a well-defined human behavioral system. But simple models using simple tools, like how humans might decide, like being a mitigator or non-mitigator. So these kind of simplified models can be used to understand human decisions or uh, their thoughts about climate change. So our model is also a coupled social climate model, and it has a social part as well as a climate part. So the climate part has an existing Earth system model, which basically uh, takes the considers the atmospheric carbon dioxide level and uh, uh, predicts the corresponding temperature levels. And the social model that we had considered here is the rumor propagation model. So rumor propagation model generally helps us to understand how rumors spread through a population. And uh, Basically, the rumor that we consider specifically for this model is something related to climate change. Something like climate change is a myth or we need not worry about climate change. So some rumors that we might have come across about climate change will be something like Earth's climate has always been changing or plants need carbon dioxide, so it's fine to emit or something like climate change is a future problem and we need not worry about it. So having a closer look at the rumor propagation model that we had used here, uh, this rumor propagation has two uh, different parts. One is an individual propagation and a group propagation, and it's con considered in a heterogeneous network. And the whole population in this rumor propagation model is divided into four compartments or four categories. So the people who are unaware of the rumor or haven't received the rumor yet are known as ignorance. So they are totally unaware of the rumor or they haven't seen the rumor yet in their social network platform. And once they become aware of this rumor, it takes some time for them to actually decide whether I should believe this rumor or not. It's like a time taken for them to actually decide whether to forward it or share it with others. So that stage, they are known as hesitator. And once they decide on what to do with this rumor, they either become believers and spread this rumor further by sharing and forwarding those messages, or they become a rejecter, understanding that it's just a rumor, climate change is a real issue, and do not further share those rumors. And usually, rumors might lose its charm after some time, 
and people will forget about this rumor slowly. So whether they are believers or rejectors, they just forget about this rumor after some time and become ignorance again, being susceptible to a rumor again. So we coupled the rumor propagation model and the Earth system model, basically by making the individual believing rate as well as the group believing rate a function of the temperature. So that when there is a change in temperature, especially like when there is an increase in the temperature, there will be less people who will believe the rumor. And also we made the emission a function of the number of rejectors in the population. So basically when there's more rejectors in the population and when there are more emission limiting strategies considered by those rejectors, there will be less emissions. And now looking at some results. So the first thing we did is to basically um, analyze whether this coupling or this model actually works. So in, so these are the time series and uh, figure A is the dynamics for the rumor propagation model. So we, for this model, we considered that the rumor begins sometimes after 2000s, closely to 2020s. Um, and once the rumor propagation begins, there will be this mass flow of, to different categories and people might end up being a believer or reject, rejected. So the green color coded ones are the people who reject the rumor, basically uh, believing that climate change is a real issue. And red colored coded ones are the believers who believe the rumor. So corresponding to the rumor propagation and the increase in the rejected population, in figure B, we can observe that around the same time period, there is an increase, uh, it's a decrease in the emission levels. And the temperature level, as I mentioned, is related to the atmospheric carbon dioxide level, and the temperature level also decreases after some time. So this basically helped us to uh, understand that there is a relation between this Earth system model and the rumor propagation model that we had considered. So one of the important results that we observed is that the emission limiting strategies considered by the rejectors in the population actually um, has a great impact on the temperature level that we might end up in the future. So to analyze the situation, we basically divided the case, the, divided the whole scenario to three different cases. So the first case is when there is a low emission limiting strategies or less effort taken by the rejectors in the population to reduce their emissions. So in that case, we can see that the emission keeps on increasing for another nine to 10 decades, even after the rumor propagation begins after 2000s. And then after some time, it decreases. And the corresponding temperature level we end up is above two degrees Celsius according to our model. And the second case is when there is some emission limiting strategies considered by the rejectors in the population. It's not a lot, but there is some strategies taken by them. Even in that case, the emissions actually increase for another four to five decades, even after the rumor propagation begins. And the temperature we end up is still above 1.5 degrees Celsius. And the third case is the optimistic case or the best case when the rejectors strongly uh, do a lot of activities and mitigation, mitigation st strategies and the emissions reduce as soon as the rumor propagation begins. And in that case, the temperature that we end up in the future is less than 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is most desirable case. So basically this analysis helped us to understand that it's not just enough for the people to reject or believe the rumor, that is basically understand the concept about climate change, but to actually act or do something about it, like to mitigate, their, mitigate or to limit their emissions through their actions. And also, uh, the time taken for the time taken or the time point where the emission decreases matters the most in determining the temperature that we might end up in the future. Also, this total plot supports the previous result that the emission limiting constant by the rejectors is the most influential parameter in case of temperature change. And another uh, interesting observation we had is that group parameters, that is group propagation parameters, have a major influence on temperature levels compared to the corresponding individual propagation parameters. So if we have a closer look at any of the parameter listed, 
always the group counterpart is above or influencing the temperature levels more than the individual propagation parameters. Another interesting result is that temperature change is more sensitive to the average number of group members than the average number of groups. So this basically means that when there is more members in a group, that influences the temperature levels more than having a lot of groups or the number of groups that is present. Basically, having more members in a group helps in spreading the messages quickly in the room of propagation. And that in turn helps in determining the temperature levels because that is something that may uh, helps people to decide whether they should believe or reject the rumor. And another observation we had is that about the forgetting rates. So I mentioned that people might forget about the rumor after some time and uh, they might become ignorance again, so being susceptible to the rumor again. So we found that when rejectors forget the rumor, that influences the temperature change more than the believers forgetting the rumor. So I, I just tried to put in all the results using just one plot, but there are further plots which helps to, or which supports these results. So basically, human decisions does have some impact on temperature change as well as temperature change affects human decisions. And this can change the future emission scenarios. It, it can vary in the future. It need not be some constant uh, pathways that is already set up. And also that mitigation strategies are extremely important. It's not just enough for people to understand about climate change or have an opinion about climate change, but to actually do something about it so that the emission decreases. So basically impact of human on any natural system, not just the climate system, is an important area to analyze. And uh, making these models more realistic, uh, making it more complex or complicated when it becomes more realistic, can give us more accurate predictions about the future scenarios. And coupled models are a good tool to do this. Like it helps us to analyze the human part as well as the environment part or the climate part. So these type of models can help us to attain a better idea about what will happen when human beings are actually considered in the system. So that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, actually, I can stay here. Um,